Today you will be hearing from the Honorable Minister on some of our major program achievements and highlights. He will also be briefing you on the major health sector achievements within the 10 administrative regions. And there are some other projects that will be continuing for 2024 that he will also be briefing you on. Exercise gives you more than just a great body. Some benefits you can't see, but you can feel. Cardio increases your heart rate and improves circulation. 60 minutes is good for heart health and 30 minutes for overall health. It helps boost your immune system, eases your mind, and rejuvenates your body. Now let's talk muscle. The more muscle mass you have, the more fat your body burns while resting. A pound of muscle burns three times more calories than a pound of fat. So having more muscle means you can consume more calories. Exercise can improve the look of your skin, boosts your self-confidence, and helps you sleep better so you can wake up and do it all over again. 30 consecutive minutes per day, five days a week. Start now. Eat well, keep moving. A message from the Chronic Disease Unit of the Ministry of Health. I want to start by saying that, you know, the work that we've been doing in the ministry, when we came in in 2020, we came in in the midst of a pandemic. And I think while our first year, year and a half, would have been focused on the pandemic, we also started to do a lot of different things, which I think was not recognized by the general public. And so today you're seeing the fruits of some of those things that we have also done. Um, coming to light now because we're seeing the results of those things. Uh, we also were guided when we came to government in 2020 by the PPP Civic Manifestos. And in the manifesto, we've had about seven things that the government or the, the PPP then had promised that they would have completed in the five years um, in office, I can say to you that I went back and I looked at those seven things that was promised, and we have already achieved all of those things. So just to maybe recap, for those of you who probably might have um, looked at the manifesto before, one of the first things that we said we were going to do is to improve uh, the amount of pharmaceuticals in the system. In 2020, when we came in, the levels of pharmaceutical stock were basically about 35% across the country. And we had a lot of expired um, pharmaceuticals. Uh, we are now at 92% across the country. The second thing that we had looked at or we had promised was that we'll give incentives to the private sector to enable them to bring in and upgrade their facilities. We have also done so. And we have seen that a number of private sector entities, hospitals and so forth, have been adding to their equipment stock. So quite a few hospitals now have cat labs, they have brought in new um, x-ray machines, CT scans, MRIs, and things like that. Um, the third area was one where we would have given doctors and nurses and other healthcare workers an option, uh, whether they want to be on a pensionable establishment or whether they want to be on contract. This, at the time, was a major issue and so we said we'll give people an option, and that was done since 2020. So that too, we have been able to accomplish. Um, in terms of upgrading medical facilities, this was another promise that we made that once elected, we would upgrade medical facilities. And we have done a lot of work in this area. I'll go through that in the substantive uh, presentation. We have also looked at, or one of the other things that were um, looked at was 
to upgrade tertiary facilities and to have an enhanced partnership with the private sector. This too, we have also been doing, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, another one of our promises was to increase uh, renumeration. And as of 2023, uh, we have done that for all categories of clinical staff, um, ranging from nurses, allied health workers, to medical doctors and so forth. And then the last one that we had on the manifesto was to improve performance monitoring. And as of last year, we have introduced service level contracts for all the different regions so that we can track uh, what they have been doing. So when we look at our accomplishments against what we have promised in our manifesto, we have accomplished all the things that we have had in the manifesto. So a lot of what we are doing is really beyond what we have promised in the manifesto. And I want to start out with um, infectious diseases, programmatic things. So if we look at infectious diseases, one of the commitments that we have made is we want to see a number of infectious diseases eliminated from Guyana. Uh, in the past, we have worked on getting control of diseases, but we are now working on eliminating some diseases. Filaria is one such disease that we have set our sights on for elimination. We have had several campaigns in this country dealing with filaria. Some of you might remember Dexalt, um, and people weren't too happy with the Dexalt, but nevertheless, it contributed to reducing the amount of filaria cases. And in the midst of COVID, as if you would recall, we also did a mass drug administration uh, against filaria. Now, what that has resulted in uh, right now is that going into this last mass drug administration, filaria was endemic in eight of the 10 regions in Guyana. And having completed the mass drug administration, we have now eliminated filaria from six of those eight areas. So currently, when we, and we did this all scientifically, we had the US CDC and PAHO and everybody came in this year and did an assessment. And we now only have a few cases of filaria in two specific regions. That is in regions four, and in regions three. And next year, we are going to target those specific areas in these two regions. Um, and by the end of the year, and when we do the next assessment, which would be in 2025, we are extremely confident that we'll achieve at least elimination status. For us to officially be deemed as being eliminated, We'll have to do these tests for the next uh, three years. And once it consistently shows that it's zero, then we'll be given the status of having eliminated file area. So we are on track because we have moved from where eight regions had file area to now reducing that to six. And we are very confident next year when we in intervene and make these interventions that that would come down. And, um, the additional two areas that we have that we will reduce it. In terms of the other disease that we are looking for elimination, we are looking at leprosy. And with leprosy, uh, this year we recorded 30 cases. And so as to prevent other persons from getting infected, people who are caregivers and so forth, we have introduced another program, and that is to offer prophylaxis to those persons who have been in contact uh, with the patient. Uh, this is also a new thing that we are doing, and it's probably we are probably the second country in the Caribbean to be offering such a program, the first being uh, Cuba. 
And so we are the second country where we are offering prophylaxis to those persons who have been in contact. And we feel very confident that we'll be able over the next couple of years to eliminate uh, leprosy from Guyana. Currently, we, uh, this year, we were, we were able to diagnose 30 persons and all 30 persons have received treatment. So as we discover cases, we are treating people and we are also treating those that they've been in contact with. So we're, I think in this case, we are on the right trajectory uh, for elimination. Leishmaniasis is another um, <coughs> disease that we have earmarked for elimination. This year, we have only had two cases. Chagas is another disease, and this year we have recorded zero cases. And we are also looking at um, worms, and this is something that uh, we'll be working on more extensively in the school. So the five diseases that I've spoken about so far they are referred to by the WHO as neglected infections. And they were neglected because not a lot of attention was paid to them over the years. But there's now a global um, trust to try to eliminate these diseases because of the medication that we have available, we can actually um, eliminate them. And so in Guyana, of the 20 diseases that WHO has identified, we have five of them. And we want to make sure that we eliminate them before 2030. And as I said, we are on that trajectory already. Another disease that we are working on to eliminate is hepatitis C. Um, in Guyana, when you were diagnosed with hepatitis C, uh, basically there wasn't treatment that was available. And because the treatment wasn't available, uh, basically you would live with hepatitis C. And a consequence of that is that 10 to 15 years after, you can develop uh, liver cancer. So we have known of people for many years because when they come to the blood bank, uh, we are able to screen them and we can diagnose them to see whether they have uh, hep C. But um, we weren't able to treat them. And that's because the cost of treatment was extremely high. Uh, at the beginning, hep C treatment would have cost about 8,000 8, US dollars per patient. That came down to about $20,000. And right now, on the global market, it would cost between 1,500 to 2,000 US dollars per patient. We have a very special arrangement with PAHO, and we have been able to buy these medication for our patients at less than 200 US dollars per patient. And we have initiated this program. Uh, so far, we have successfully treated about 44 patients, and we have another 22 or so that is currently undergoing treatment. And um, we feel that this is going to be a big success for us as well. And we are the first country in the Caribbean to have started a program to treat hepatitis C. No other country in the Caribbean is doing this. So we are the first. And I think a lot of people want to learn from our experience. Uh, some of the other diseases that we're working not to eliminate, but to control by 2030 uh, would be uh, TB. And you have known for many years we've had issues with TB. So right now, we have seen a decline in our TB cases as compared, let's say, to 2019 when we had 498 cases. Right now, we are recording 337 cases. And we are working on treating people. We have updated the treatment, and even those persons who need second-line treatment can now access second-line treatment uh, quite readily. HIV, um, this year we recorded 238 new cases, uh, which is a decline, and we are happy about that. But we have uh, approximately 9,000 persons who have been uh, HIV positive. Of those, we have 6,558 persons that are on treatment. And earlier in the year, we have installed a viral load machine. So we are now able to do viral loads and we'll see whether or not the treatment that we're giving people, once they comply, whether they're having a viral suppression. 
which is very important because if we suppress the virus, then those persons are not able to transmit uh, the, the disease. Malaria, this year we recorded 21,729 cases um, and we did close to 100,000 tests. And there are a number of strategies that we are using to reduce the burden of malaria. We have found that there's a very close association between malaria and gold mining. And so we'll be working closely with the gold miners to make sure that we can reduce uh, the cases, especially in the camp. You will see us in the first quarter of next year start training a lot of uh, gold miners or people working at the, um, in these mining sites to one, be able to do diagnostics of malaria and we'll be giving them the treatment, teaching them how to use the protocol and then they'll report back to us. And we think by using this strategy, we'll see a significant drop in the cases. Um, we have also employed rapid testing. So you don't have to look into a microscope to diagnose somebody with, um, with malaria. We can use rapid diagnostic tests, which is now available. And we have been distributing those as well. So these are some of the diseases that uh, we are working to control. This year, we have seen a spike in dengue cases, and we are happy to report that we have seen a, a, a decline now in those cases, but we continue to monitor um, on a weekly basis. We record how many cases we have, how many hospitalizations, and things like that. And we, because of the measures that we have taken uh, over the last couple of months, we have seen a significant decline in these cases. Now, as it relates to infectious diseases, apart from this elimination and control strategy that we have, we globally, it is thought that the next pandemic, uh, you would see a jump from um, viruses circulating in animals uh, coming over into the human population. All the major outbreaks that we have had, we've seen this shift and therefore, there's a new approach that the world is taking, and that's a One Health approach, where we have to combine our resources of agriculture and tracking viruses in animals, and um, whenever there's those jump into the human population. So last year, th this year, in fact, we have started a One Health approach, where we have a combination with agriculture to do surveillance of various viruses and and if there's a shift into the human population to be able to detect that. We have also, in keeping with our international obligations, completed a number of studies. One is called SPAR, that is State Party Annual um, Report. So we have completed the one for 2022, and we have submitted that to the WHO. We have done what is called a joint external evaluation for the first time in Guyana to check our readiness in terms of surveillance and pandemic readiness. Um, so this is the first time we have done uh, such an assessment. Very few countries have done this. And we now have been able to uh, see where we have challenges. And with those challenges, uh, then we'll work over the next couple of years to make sure that we fix those challenges. Um, in collaboration with CDC and with CARFA, the National Public Health Reference Lab has now been one of those labs where we can do uh, Sentinel uh, surveillance for respiratory virus. So this is an ongoing program that we have with the National Public Health Reference Lab. And next year, using all of these assessments, we'll be able to do a national action plan for health security. And that is coming up with a plan so that any virus or any one of these uh, infectious outbreaks that we'll be able to respond to them appropriately. So these are some new elements that we have added. These are things that we never had before, but these are things that we're working on. And you will see early in January, uh, we'll be working with a team coming out of Johns Hopkins University to implement the electronic uh, surveillance system for diseases. 
In terms of our chronic non-communicable disease program, uh, this is a relatively new program because prior to um, 2021, uh, we had chronic diseases lumped under infectious diseases, and we weren't able to bill out the programs per se. So we have made a shift. We have created a separate program in the ministry looking at chronic non-communicable diseases. And this year, we had a, a lot of focus on diabetes because the estimates of diabetes in our country uh, by some international organizations, such as the International Diabetic Federation, you're saying that we probably have close to 66,000 people. Now, we are working with our numbers to verify whether that is so or not, but nevertheless, diabetes is a major problem in Guyana. So we have done a couple of things. We have upgraded the diabetes guidelines and we have done this in partnership with Mount Sinai, uh, where we are looking at um, better ways of diagnosing people. We have, we have also looked at pre-diabetes persons um, who have risk factors for diabetes. And if they don't mitigate these risk factors, then they'll end up with diabetes. So we want to help people to delay the onset of diabetes. And then if you actually get diabetes, then to have control. And we want you to have control because if you don't have control, then it can lead to a lot of complications. Uh, but even if you get those complications, then we want to put systems in place that we can prevent those complications from growing. So that has been our strategy. Um, and we have new guidelines that we have issued. These guidelines, we have used them to train doctors in all the regions of Guyana. And uh, they are rolling out these guidelines as we speak to you know, their colleagues and implementing it um, in the various health centers that we have. One key things with these new guidelines is to use a new laboratory test called HbA1c. And so in implementing this new test, uh, most of our health centers don't have the equipment to do this. So one thing that we have done is to buy the equipment and we have given that to four to six uh, health centers and hospitals across the country. So four to six of these places right now are capable of doing HbA1c. HbA1c is a more reliable predictor of whether somebody is diabetic or not, because it assesses the hemoglobin over the last 90 days to see whether or not um, the hemoglobin has uh, glucose in it. And that's a more reliable indicator that when you come in and if we do a, a, a stick and check it with a glucometer, what that test shows is what is happening to you now so if you had something sugary or, uh, you know, to eat maybe an hour prior to that, then it would probably show high. But with uh, glycated hemoglobin, the HbA1c, you see what is happening with you over the last 90 days. And so that's why we have shifted to go to HbA1c. Next year, we'll buy more of these equipment and put them out there so that more people can have ac access to HbA1c. This year, we have also resuscitated a lot of our uh, foot clinics. You know, one of the problems that diabetics would have is that if they don't care their feet properly, they can end up with lots of ulcers, which results in amputation and so forth. So we have trained a lot of people um, and we are working on making sure that this program is properly rolled out. We have this year, and I was saying to the CMO and others, we have also rolled out a comprehensive diabetic center at Luziknan, but it seems like such a long time. Um, this is a, a kind of a test facility that we are running where you can go there and have all the services that a diabetic would need. So when you go there, you see people who are very skilled at managing diabetes. Uh, you will have access to an endocrinologist 
So if you don't get proper control, that endocrinologist can help to make sure that you get better control. You'll have access to a dietitian. Um, part of managing diabetes is that you need to check your eyes. So we would be able to do um, the check your retina and to make sure that you're not having problems and so forth. So all the services that are needed is in one place. And we are hoping that the successes that we are already seeing with this center, that we'll replicate it in other regions. We also have at that center uh, a rehab area. So people who need um, load-bearing shoes would have such uh, shoes and things like that. So very comprehensive um, services that would be offered there. In addition to these services that we are offering for diabetes, we also have about 150 children who have been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And we provide them with all the insulin that they need and all the testing um, equipment and things that they need. So um, we have 150 children who are benefiting from this program. Moving away from diabetes, another focus of the ministry in terms of chronic disease has been in the area of hypertension and cardiovascular diseases. Uh, we have been working with PAHO on a program called HEARTS, and right now we have about 140 health centers where we have implemented HEARTS. So what is HEARTS? HEARTS really looked at risk factors relating to cardiovascular diseases and how we can reduce these risk factors. It also, um, we have been changing out the medication that we give to patients to give them more effective medication that can control hypertension and cardiovascular diseases. So we have this program now in 140 health centers across the country. In addition, uh, this year we have distributed to various health centers and hospitals uh, about 50 ECG machines. So when you go there, you can actually get your ECG done. Um, so that's a, another important thing for us. We have also done, um, through our rehab program, we have introduced uh, rehabilitation for stroke patients. And this is going to um, grow. This program is going to grow. And we're ensuring that persons who need these services can access them. We have also been going home to elderly patients and to offer them some amount of home-based services. And this would be, it ranges from a healthcare worker to a doctor going. Uh, we have this in about five regions right now, and the idea is to expand it and to improve the quality of the home-based services that we are offering. This year, in terms of home-based visits, we have done close to 11,000 such visits across the country. But this is a program that we are constantly improving. Another one of the chronic diseases that we have been focusing on is cancers. We're not going to go into all the different cancers that we have, but I want to say that we have been able to upgrade our cancer registry, uh, where we now have uh, more uh, accurate data, uh, and we have been tracking and trying to get and improve the data collection. Millions of people live with or are predisposed to type 1, type 2, and gestational diabetes worldwide. If you have diabetes, eating well, exercising, taking your medication, educating yourself on this condition, and knowing and managing your numbers can guarantee a healthy and fulfilling life and delay or prevent serious health complications like heart disease, blindness, and kidney failure. Persons with diabetes should aim for a blood sugar level between 80 to 130 milligrams per deciliter before meals and less than 180 milligrams per deciliter one to two hours after meals. For anyone predisposed to diabetes, adopting healthy lifestyles is the key to delaying this disease's progression. That means eating well, exercising, maintaining a healthy weight, and getting screened regularly. 
If you are unwell, have high numbers, or want to learn more about this condition, visit your nearest health center. You can lead healthier and longer lives with our intervention and your adherence. A message from the Ministry of Health. Thank you.